All right, so I've got my copy of today's work in my flash drive. Go ahead and open your go ahead and open the index file just to get back into the project. Uh, so here's the project what we ended up with last time. Run it in Chrome. And if you click show classes, there's no classes. Mine's got a class because I added one. Go ahead and add a few classes, three classes, let's say. I want to add some data to the database and maybe on accident, on purpose, make a misspelling somewhere so that then we can fix it. So just as an example of editing something. So I'm going to add a few classes here. Class 1, 2, 3, and this is an English class with Smith. Add that. And let's say class 1, 2, 4. And that's a Spanish class. Maybe add one more. One, two, five. Japanese. So just add, just add three classes. CRN, title instructor, just add three classes so that we can populate the database. My concept, similar to having the delete button here, I want to have a little section for updating. And again, when we get into jQuery Mobile is when we can make this look a little nicer. And that's utilitarian, but it's not that nice looking. We can do that in jQuery Mobile. So I want to add a new little section here for updating a class. And there's three possible things to update in the class, isn't there? Uh, CRN, title, and instructor. So we'll have three input boxes. Uh, eventually, we'll have those fields auto-populate, but we'll have to put them in manually in the beginning, and then we will make them work better in a little bit. So if we get back to um, Notepad, we need to find the line where we made those, where we made the delete button appear this delete button and input box. What line number approximately is the delete CRN in your code? Can anyone find it? Remember you can scroll, scroll, scroll to find it, or you can do control F, delete 86, uh, 83, mine is 83, yours is 86 possibly. So if you're using my code on line 83, so I didn't have that memorized, of course. I just searched for in my code, wherever it says delete CRN. So that's the line right there that, it, that creates that horizontal rule, that line, and then creates the input box and the button and end of line. I want to do something similar. So press Enter, and on line 84, we're going to keep adding to the string plus equals. We're going to add a little bit more. Remember, plus equals is that we continue to add to that object, and then we display it. So then in quotes, and I think I did this previously. I forgot to end semicolon at least in one place, possibly. But quotes, semicolon to end. And inside of the quotes, we'll create another horizontal rule to break that section. There's a section to delete the class, and then there's a section for updating a class. And just to make it a little bit different, I've got an input box first and then a button. I want my button first and then my input box. So we'll just do it backwards. We'll write a we'll create a button first. So set your button tag. In order for this button to have any text on screen, in between the button tags, we will write update class. That's what the button will say. We have a button updating class. We're going to give the button an ID similar to the button we've got above. We need an ID so that we can reference it in JavaScript. So let's back up into button. 
ID equals single quotes. We need single quotes because we've got double quotes around everything. So button space ID single quotes. And we'll call this button uh, update class. So now there's an object, there's going to be an object on screen that the JavaScript can reference because it's got an ID. And the three things that we need, uh, well, pouch needs one, well, pouch needs two things to update anything in the database. One is the unique ID in the database, which makes sense. There's one ID in the database attached to an object that's the unique one. That's the underscore ID in pouch. We need that. The second thing is called a revision number, which we'll get to. And so we need then input boxes for the ID, the class title, and the instructor. So after the button, we will create an input. It's still in the quotes of type, single quotes, text. This is going to accept text. Space. We'll give this a placeholder, so a little bit of placeholder text to guide the user. This is where you put in your CRN number, so for example, 123. That input box will automatically have the placeholder text 123. And then we need an ID so that in JavaScript we can grab what the person types in there. So ID equals single quotes. We'll call this update CRN. So this is an input box. This is going to accept a possible class that exists in the database to update it. Let's say I misspelled one of my classes. And so we need to reference the, the CRN. I'm going to copy that just to save myself a little bit of typing. I need two more, two more input boxes, two more that are also texts. Um, but one will need to update CRN, one to update title, and one to update instructor. So still inside the quotes, again, to save myself some typing, I'm going to copy that input and then paste it two more times. So my first input box is update CRN. My second one is still going to be input type text placeholder. This time it's our class title. So I'll write title. And this will be update title. So one input box to update the CRN, one input box to update the title, and a third input box to update the instructor. It's the same long line, line 84. I wouldn't break it because it's all in quotes. And that'll, uh, that'll confuse things. The third input box, the placeholder there, I'll write instructor, and update instructor. So here we're building the interface, we're writing it in the HTML. This is the, the structure layer, remember back to those three concepts, the structure layer. Visually on screen, this is what's going to be displayed, three input boxes. Let me save it and run it quickly just to check if mine is correct and then we'll check yours. You, what you should see is you show classes and then at the very end you've got the HR the button that says update class and three input boxes with our placeholder text. That's what it should look like. Here's my code. Again, it's a long line of code, but it's just duplicated three times in total. Three input boxes. Just take a moment for you to write that. Everyone, 
We won't need any help with that not rendering. I'm not sure why I'm, I'm not getting the, uh, the bond of binding. Um, Did you click show classes? You have to click the button show classes. Is what it's oh. We don't need we don't need those buttons until we have classes. So that's what we need to show classes. So did everyone get those input boxes? Yeah, I thought it was just kind of disparate. Yeah, sure. <laughs> what it should look like? Yeah. Right here. So three input boxes. Question. Would it be learning the same concept just for the back end or the admin? Would that be possible? Kind of like the back end learning the Basically, any screen that we can create here right now, it's for the users, but any screen that we can create, we can set it up in a way that it's just for the administrator. It's just that it would never be visible to the user. But same sort of concept. All right, so I've got three input boxes. And I've got a button that will eventually do something. So our structure layer should be complete. Later, we'll make it look nicer. Next, we need to do with work with our behavior layer, which is just a fancy way of saying the JavaScript. So we need some JavaScript to make that button active. Um, let's go then to um, toward the end. We've got a little group of button event handlers. We've got these three buttons, events that we handle. These are event handlers. Uh, for the add class, show classes, and then display the results. We're, we're going to add a new group, uh, a new element like this uh, to make that button active. So line 108, we're going to start the same sort of syntax, dollar parentheses, quotes, dot on, parentheses. That's the, that's the most basic syntax for this some object on the screen when something happens do something that's what the previous three lines look like when you break them down and so we need to reference that that button on the screen which is pound update class that's the ID that we attached to the button that we designed a moment ago. So now um, the behavior layer, JavaScript slash jQuery, now it knows that button, we're, we're targeting it for something. On click, we've been doing on click over and over, which automatically translates basically to a tap when it's on a device. There's no clicking on a device technically, there's tapping. But um, it all works internally that the, that the click becomes a tap, basically. So in the on, we need a click. Once there's a click on that button, we'll do the same thing here, function, and then some function that we will invent to actually let us update the classes. Comma after click, don't forget that. Function, open close parentheses, open close curly braces. Just as before, we do that so many times. And I think this is a long, there's a lot to write. This is actually the compact version. The not compact version is document dot get element by id, which element, and then equals function, and then add event ha add event listener, and blah blah blah. It's much longer. This is the compact version. jQuery. We don't have a function yet, but we're going to write it in a moment. So in the parentheses, in the curly braces here, um, we'll make up a function called. We'll keep it nice and obvious. We'll call it update class. Parentheses. We've got a function to add a class, show class, delete class, update class. Consistent.
So above, uh, right above this group of event handlers, that ends the um, delete class. Um, so we're going to go to line 105, create a new function, or define the function that is update class. Right, that's the syntax for creating a function. Now when someone clicks on that button, it'll run that function. And again, what's our usual tactic to just see if this works? An alert. Let's put an alert right here and just say it works or whatever. So inside of the update class, we'll alert. And we'll say update class works. Save it and run it just to make sure that that button is active, that we're clicking on it, we get an alert pop up then we'll make it do more complex things because we don't want to be typing and typing and typing and then it doesn't work and we think, where did I go wrong? Well, you misspelled up, up doot class here instead of update class and we spent all that time typing something that didn't quite work. All right, I'm going to save this and see what it looks like. Remember, you have to click Show Classes. Don't, you don't have to type anything into these boxes yet. We're not there yet. But if you click Update Class, do you get a pop-up that says Alert? I mean, a pop-up that says it works? Huh. Neither did I. Function, Update Class, Update Class. What did I misspell? Did anyone get it to pop up? No one? Oh. Uh, okay. Let's see. What does the console say? Let me try. Oh, I, I, actually, we should be seeing what we did previously. I see it. Um, this one's not working, just for the same reason that the previous one didn't work about deleting a class. Remember, delete class didn't work because technically this code is saying there should be something on the screen the moment the HTML loads called update class. Update class doesn't exist until we click show class, so this code doesn't know what to find. So actually, we should change our code to be like the previous line. We're going to say the result, and then click comma, update class. That way we can target the child, this button that is a child of the result, because it doesn't exist at the moment that we add this code. So uh, I'm going to select, I'm going to select the pound update class and cut it or move it so that it's after click, comma, before the function. I'm going to drag update class. Remember, you can drag your code. I'm going to drag it after the comma. And remember to add a comma 
after this and put it in quotes, just like the previous one. So in quotes, that ID The comma is after the quotes, that's standard syntax. Okay, so I'm moving out that ID from the main selector and putting it as a child, basically. After click, comma function. And then the main selector here will be the same pound the result. Because the result is our parent element, that placeholder that displays everything. And these two particular buttons do not exist until you click Show Classes. Question? How is that different than Add Class and Show Class? The Add Class, so as soon as I run my code, as soon as I run my code, the Add Class and Show Class buttons exist as soon as it loads up eventually here. Um, okay. Um, as soon as this code runs, we've got we've got the buttons visible. Oh, okay. Okay. The other two buttons don't exist until we click show class. Gotcha. Now they exist, okay. and that's why we need this extra bit here. Parent element, child element, these are children elements of the result. All right, so now if I click that, alert. That worked for everyone. Need a little help there? You are very close, but is that actually exactly is that your input box is inside the button?
understand is what you're trying to say here, the structure of the team and how much you have that team. Mm -hmm. What is it actually
All right, everyone. So at this point, we should have then show class, click update class, you get a pop-up. This is just to show proof of concept, basically, that that button is clickable. Good thing we stopped to make sure that that worked because we could have been going further along in this update class and we would have not figured out that there was a problem where we needed to reference the child element of the parent. But now that that works there, I'm going to delete that up. I'm going to delete that alert because we know that this function works. Update class. So I'm deleting line 106, the alert. We don't need it anymore. So what we need to do with update class is we've got those three input boxes on screen. The person is going to select to update class 1, 2, 3. So that requires the uh, all of the fields. Whenever we update any any item in the database, PouchDB requires that all of the elements be referenced. We cannot edit only the instructor. We need to edit the ID, the title of the class, and the instructor. That doesn't need. That doesn't mean we need to change them all. We just need to reference them. So that's why we've got those three input boxes. In these three input boxes are going to be the references to class 1, 2, 3, English, and Smith. But we only need to deal with the ID. This is all that pouch needs, an ID. The rest doesn't need, but we need to, in my case, change spell English properly in title. So to capture what's in those boxes, we're going to do something very similar to what we've done before. Uh, so inside of line uh, 106, we're going to create a variable. 
we're going to reference it through jQuery, so we'll put the dollar. We'll call it the CRN. CRN. There's going to be a CRN that we're going to reference on screen. Dot equals, oops, sorry, not a dot. The dot is a little later. Equals another dollar. This time we're using the syntax to We're using the syntax to, to get what's in that input box on screen. The input boxes have those three names that we gave them, which were pound update CRN. We've got input boxes on screen. Update CRN, update title, update instructor. So we're referencing that, and then we're going to we're going to take what's what someone wrote there and put it in that variable. To take what the person wrote at the very end, then we have dot val, open close, open close um, parentheses. So now, give me the value of that input box and put it into that variable. We need to do that for the other two input boxes. So let me show you something slightly different than we've done before. What we've done before is up on line 27 to 28. We're about to do something very similar. Create three variables, fill them with these values. Here's the slight variation. It might not matter right now because we've got a relatively small and simple app. But later on, this could, give, this could be a good time saver. So I'll show you both ways. Let's do it like this. I haven't added a semicolon yet. Remember, semicolon terminates my line. Not, we won't add a semicolon yet. Let's add a comma. And then press Enter and Tab. And then we'll write the uh, title equals dollar. I'll explain what I did in a moment. Pound update title dot val. Looks almost exactly the same as line 28. The difference is because I put a comma here, I don't have to write that. I don't have to write var again. I'm kind of reusing the same var to create one variable and then another, comma, and then another, and then semicolon. So again, with just three variables, it doesn't matter. I could have written var, var, var. But if I have a hundred variables, am I going to write var a hundred times? Sure. That's 3 bytes times 100, which is 300 bytes, and that could add up and add up and up. So to continue, another comma, another enter, and then the next um, variable, update instructor, give me its val, then semicolon, end the statement. So I say this because also this shows up in tutorials and hopefully you're taking this class and hopefully also looking at stuff and being curious on your own and looking up on uh, pouchdb.com or maybe Stack Exchange and so forth. Maybe you're going online and just kind of researching on your own. If you do, you will see a whole bunch of different examples from a whole bunch of different people with a whole bunch of styles of writing code. One of the things about writing code is that everyone's got a style, and everyone's right, and everyone's wrong in the way that they write their code. It's just the way that you learn to write it, that's the right way. If you're going to work with a team, and everyone in the team is writing it a certain way, you got to learn that way, because then you're going to have conflicts. So what I'm saying is when you look stuff up, you might see this method as well. You might say, well, why didn't they write var, var, var? Because it's, been, it's, using, it's reusing the same var one, two, and three times. And you'll see this. So here we are capturing what the person wrote in those three input boxes. Next line. Just to make sure, let's put it into the console. And I'll show you another little trick here. In the console, I want to display these three variables. I can do that with one console log message similar with comments. We'll write the dollar the CRN, comma, space, dollar the title, comma, space, dollar the instructor. 
that's a shorthand is a if I had done console log dollar CRN semicolon console log uh, the title semicolon console log the instructor I put all three of them separated by commas in a sense I'm doing console log three times at once save it and run it type something into those boxes now and then click update it still won't update it but you should then see in your console what you wrote let's see save that run that show classes I'm just gonna write whatever I'm also gonna open up my console and then I'm going to click update class. Oops, the instructor is not defined. Make sure you spell it properly. The instructor. Oops. I misspelled it here. In. No, you misspelled the bottom one. Oh, right. Right, right, right. You've got an R. Instructor. S-T-R. Instructor. 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 There we go. Yes, so a little mistake. But remember, I might have misspelled it here, and as long as I misspell it consistently, then I'm okay. <laughs> but let's spell it correctly. The instructor. Show classes, add some stuff here. Update class. Three, three console outputs. So does that make sense? We've captured, we've created three variables, and we've captured the values of three input boxes. And then we're displaying it in the console. We've done that before. It's a slight variation. Did that work for everyone? If it didn't, triple check your, your, your spelling. Remember this, this trick here. Um, double click. Double click something to highlight it. It didn't highlight this one up here. Why? Misspelled. Not spelled right. Instructor instead of instructor. So double click your variables. They should highlight in the console. That's one way to tell. Am I displaying what I think I should be displaying? And then also this in your IDs and such. Nope, you can just fill in one and it will show you in the console the result of one of those boxes. The other boxes will be empty and you'll just get an empty space. Did that work for everyone? You're able to see your results. So the good thing about stopping to do these console log outputs is just to see if I'm on the right track. If we're not, then we need to fix it.
get to the screen of CRM. It seems to capture the first one, but not the second one. And it gets to the other one way. And so it ends up in the middle. Yeah, it seems to capture the first one, but not the second one. And it gets to the other one. It seems to end up in the Okay, so if we're able to capture these, these fields, next comes the part about updating the data. And so the pouch documentation tells us the, the way you do this is very similar to how we deleted something. Remember, we have to say, let's try to get an object from the database, and if we do get a successful result, then let's do something about it. If we are trying to get an object that doesn't exist, we'll get an error, and then we'll deal with that. So we're going to need to do a db.get again, but then instead of db.remove, this is going to be the update part. So continuing on the next line, we're going to start with db.get, open close parentheses. 
semicolon. We're going to try to get an object from to see if this object, if this record exists in the database. This is actually going to be several lines that happen in here just like before. So I'm going to um, cut that into two lines, break it into two lines. You're going to be doing this get, but some sub things in between. And we've got dollar the CRN. Dollar does dollar the CRN is the underscore ID basically. Um, the underscore ID of our document is the unique ID that only one thing in the whole database can have. So here, if I'm trying to edit class one two three, obviously it'll edit class one two three. Class one two three is being saved in here because we're retrieving it right there. So we're trying to get that comma function. Open close parentheses, open close curly brace. The PouchDB syntax always has this. Try to do something, the result will then be dealt with the function, the result, the error, or the result. So inside of those parentheses, we're going to write that again. Error, comma, result just like above. And um, some more stuff is going to go inside of those curly braces, so I'll break the curly braces down I just have to re rearrange things a little bit here. So we've got a closing a closing parenthesis for the whole get. We've got a closing curly brace for the function. At the top of my screen over here, this is what this is very similar to that to that of, of over here too, db.get, just like in the delete. So they both use a get. Notice you might say, well, why does it look different? Uh, I guess we just broke it differently, but this one, that, that these two that close, they, they can combine them just like that, if you want. But I'll leave it. And so now inside, I'm going to tab a little bit more, inside of function right here, this is the part where we deal with, is it an error, or is it not an error? If curly brace, close curly brace, else open curly brace, close curly brace. So this if else will deal with, did we get an error, or did we get a result? This is inside of that curly brace of function, which is inside of the parenthesis of get. So the first thing that we'll deal with, um, we're, we're going to check, is there an error? So if, if error, line 111, if error, if trying to get the data out of the database resulted in an error, we'll deal with it here. Or else, it wasn't an error, it was the positive result. Inside of if error, well, if they were trying to, um, if they were trying to update a class that didn't exist, for example, or other kinds of errors, we want to similarly to before empty those boxes so that they don't try to add something there that doesn't work, and then give a give a pop up message. So we'll say. 
um, you know what, let's copy and paste here. I'm going to copy from the CRN dollar, copy that dollar to the end without the comma. So copy that reference to that object. Like that. Semicolon. We're going to, we're going to then in the value, just put two double quotes. That's going to blank that box. We did that before. We want to blank the box because this is an error. We don't want them to try that particular class. Then on the next line, I would do the same thing for title, right, copy from title, same thing, that's that reference of that box on screen, value, let's blank it out, just quotes, semicolon, and then the third one. That, that instructor field that's blanked it out as well. So the user will have their boxes blanked out and, and some sort of error occurred, so I want to put that into the console. The error is contained, the error message is contained here. The result of trying to get is an, could be an error. Show me the error in the console. And then on screen, I want to make a pop-up that tells the user there's a problem here. Next line, alert. In quotes, in a human-readable string, we'll say, most likely the class doesn't exist. It's the wrong class or something. So we'll say the class CRN plus dollar the CRN plus quotes does not exist. So th let's say there's class 1, 2, 3, but they're trying to update class 1, 2, 5, 1, 2, 9, 1, 2, x. It's going to it's going to clear the boxes, give the give us a console output and then on screen it'll say the class whatever they wrote whatever they wrote, because we captured it over there, whatever they wrote does not exist. Now let's save it and run it. Try to update a class, type in a class number that doesn't exist. If you have class 1, 2, 3, type 2, 2, 3. Click the button to update and let's see if you get that pop-up, because then it means error. I'm going to get my console show classes. I've got class 1, 2, 3, but I'm going to try to update class 2, 2, 3. Just put some gibberish. Update class pop up. The class CRN 223 doesn't exist. And then in the console, you get the more, more complex error messages that then we could create some switch statements for. That sort of thing. Let's pause at this point for, for a break, and up at this point, we're getting there. We're, we're, we're on our way to being able to edit a class. Right now we're dealing with the error of updating a class. Um, after the break, well, if we don't have an error, we have a result. If we do have a result, then let's update it. And we'll see that that's pretty cool. Here's my code so far. Let's take a break. It's 7.13. We'll be back at 7.23. We'll go on.